your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes. You know, okay. we're going to have to be quiet, folks, because we'll have to clear the room because actually we're in violation of fire codes. Is there a fireman here? <laughs> okay, so everyone standing along the wall is going to have to go outside because this is a fire violation. So we'll hold the meeting until you're able to go outside. Of course you can. Thank you, folks. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. The only people around to, to stand there are staff. Are, are you staff men? I, I appreciate that. But could you go out into the hallway? Thank you so much. All right, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Yes, a quorum is present for City Council, Successor Agency, and Housing Authority. All right, uh, any uh, person who wish to address City Council, Successor Agency, Housing Authority on any item on today's agenda may do so at this time. With that, we'll close public comment. Uh, item one, CSA one and H one. Warrant registered. Move along payment. Madam Council Clerk. Council members, successor agency, and housing authority members. Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor <coughs> Chairman Butts. Aye. Consent calendar. Items two through seven, and the joint consent calendar. Items 8, CSA 2, and 9, CSA 3. So moved. Second. Uh, no, no, when we have to do uh, eight, 9 separately, well, because there's two different. Ma'am. Coun council members and agency, successor agency members. We want to do, are we? Are we no, the the we question do was, could, oh, we, I'm could sorry. we call them both together as long as you identify as that. If I identify, yes, she, she, that's She's correct. identified that that's we're, correct. we're voting as both parties. All right. All right. All right. So council members and successor agency members. Yeah. For eight CSA two. I just want to do council members. Are we gonna do one or we're gonna do we're gonna do seven? we're gonna do two through seven. Okay. All right. And eight CSA two and nine CSA three. We're gonna do seven. All, all in a joint vote. Okay. Council members Dotson? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Morales? Aye. Franklin? Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Mr. Gumpels. That's our agency. Do we and have to do that? He's looking at us. And, and, now, and now call it for the successor agency okay. Okay. and the council. Okay. For those two items only, for eight and nine. Okay. Mayor, would you like for me to read them or just call for the vote? Just call for the vote. Okay. Uh, can, uh, can can't do that. It's on, con it's on consent. She can't do that. She can't do that can't do that. Oh, because she, she only called for counsel at this time. That's what I'm saying. She but called for counsel. And, and so right now what I'm doing but is ask her to do the joint consent. consent. We need to move in second with first. Yeah. Right. Okay, and okay. Okay, so moved. Second. second. Okay, Madam Clerk. Uh, counsel and counsel. Well, on the first one, it's counsel. 
Mm -hmm. So council members. No, we already voted on that. It's just a successor agency. Uh, we only voted no. two through seven. Yes. We That's did two true. through seven. We just did two through seven. So eight. Exactly, two mm -hmm. through seven. And now we're doing eight CSA two right. and nine CSA three on consent. It's been moved. No, well, hold on a second. We Aisha. had too much vacation. I, yeah, I know. So I should. Because this Aisha, thing, I've never had this. I <laughs> should go ahead now. We need a move and a second. Uh, because we're going to do it separate, the city council and then the successor. Oh, agency. so, oh, so you, you're going to do Separate. each one of yeah, these separately? Separate. Yes. No, no, we can do them to collectively, CSA 8 and 9. As but council. Then, as council, but then CSA 2 and CSA 3. It has to a, be. You need a successor and, agency. And, and that's what I, and that's what I was but trying to do. But he said two through seven. Yes, I he said did. two through seven. Yes, he did. And now what I'm saying is eight and CSA two and nine CSA three. Oh, oh, well, you want to separate those yes. out? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, I get what she's saying. So, so let's do eight and nine for the council. Okay, thank so you. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> thank council you, Council members: Dotson, aye. Padilla, aye. Morales, Franklin, aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. And now CSA two and CSA three Correct. on consent. Or successor agency. Yes. Successor agency. Move. Second. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Successor agency members: Dotson, aye. Padilla, aye. Morales, aye. Franklin, aye. Chairman Butts. I hope we never have to go through I that know. again. <laughs> I agree. That's the first time that's ever happened. Okay, DR1. Staff report recommending authorization be given to the city manager to approve a one-time merit lump sum payment for several members of the Inglewood Executive Organization and authorize the memorandum of understanding between the city and IEO. Over Dotson. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dotson, Aye. Padilla, Aye. Morales, Aye. Franklin, Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Now, in addition to this, because the manager can't authorize bonuses for himself, the city attorney, and the police chief, I move to include the police chief, city manager, and city attorney in DR1 for a one-time 10% merit bonus. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. O1. Staff report recommending adoption of an ordinance number 19-04 amending Inglewood Municipal Code Chapter 12, Article 8 to include zoning code amendments number um, 2018-002 to allow C2A zone permit use in the C3 zone citywide. Motion to waive further reading. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Move adoption. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. O2. Uh, staff report recommending adoption of an ordinance number 19-05 amending the city permit parking I district issuance, issuance and the use procedure described in the Inglewood Municipal Code Chapter 3, Article 2, Section 3-78. Motion to wait for the reading. Second. Madam Clerk. Council Members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. I move adoption. Second. Again. Madam Clerk. Council members uh, Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. A1. Thank you, Mayor. No oral reports from the City Attorney's Office. CM1. No oral reports from the City Manager's Office. CC1. No remarks. Thank you, Mayor. CT1. Thank you, Mayor. Just like to say also happy, happy New Year to everyone. Happy and would New just Year. like to mention that um, well, the current use of the mortgage rates are falling. Now they're down to 4.51%. And just uh, three months ago, they were just about at 5%. So that's a break for those who will be uh, looking to do some refining. And also, the White House says that is as of uh, yesterday, tax refunds will be paid you know, during, the, uh, during the shutdown. And would like to mention also that 
regarding the uh, investment portfolio, just a little summary. As of December 31st, 2018, total number of, of certificates of deposit on hand is 31. Face value of the certificates is $250,000. Total value of all of the certificates is $7,750,000. And the total market value at the end of the month is $7,524,128. And the coupon rate between 1.55 and 2.9. And the average yield is roughly about 2.1. And the terms are all five year. And the gross investment interest income that have been received to date is $36,653. And the gross interest income received to date since September the 14th is $335,062. And also I would like to uh, Ask the mayor to close the memory, uh, the meeting in, in memory of Henry Wise. Uh, Henry Wise. Uh, W-I-S-E, uh, long-term resident of Inglewood for more than, I think, about 45 years. And he is the wife of Versi Wise. He passed New Year's Eve. That concludes my comments and remarks. Thank you. A public comment. How many people out in the hallway want to speak for public comments? Could you raise your hand? Okay. Okay, then we'll, we'll keep it at a minute. Um, public comment. Any person who wishes to address city council on any matter connected with city business not elsewhere considered on the agenda may do at this time. One minute. We have everybody just line up that's going to speak outside. We'll take people outside first. Oh. Happy New Year, everybody. How you doing today? Uh, my name is Derek Steele, uh, Inglewood resident uh, here on behalf of Uplift Inglewood. Uh, here to talk about the housing issue. Uh, as we saw over the break, this thing got real. The things we've been talking about over the last couple years, we saw is happening in real life. Uh, people are getting price gouged. And uh, I want to extend a, you know, good on, good on you for Mayor Butts and, this, and how he went about helping to solve that solution. 28% is still kind of steep, but it's better than 127%, right? Uh, what we need to do, though, uh, because he, he, he talked about it, we've been talking about it, <coughs> rent control or rent stabilization, just cause eviction is something that we need to really discuss. Um, you know, we have workshopped this thing. We've talked about it with community members. I wanted to give this to you all so you could see what we came up with. It's what we were petitioning about. We have the solution, a community solution. Let's just implement it. I'll give it to the Sergeant at Arms. Next, we're gonna have to go a little bit faster, folks. Okay, we're gonna have to come. Emery, why don't you have them line up and be ready to go from the outside? Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name's Maria Martinez. I'm 21 years old. I was born and raised here in Inglewood. Um, I have friends and family who are renters here in Inglewood, and their rents have ex increased at an accelerated rate. And it's very concerning because even though my parents are homeowners, I still have a lot of my friend, friends and family who are renters here, and I want them to continue living here. Um, so I currently go to school in San Diego. I'm gonna graduate soon. I wanna be able to still live here and get a place of my own and rent here in the city that I basically basically grew up in. And um, and I know I won't be able to if there isn't some type of like rent control. Um, I wanna be able to give back to my community. Um, I know Santa Monica and Beverly Hills has rent control and so I'm just, I really want our city to lead um, and have some type of rent control because with all this development that we're having, I want the people who have lived here for years to be able to benefit from everything that's all this development um, that has been happening. Um, well, uh, uh, if you will still want to talk, I want to ask you a question. So you, you live in England, right? Yeah. And what was your name? Marlene. Marlene. So are you aware of the uh, average differential for a comparably sized apartment unit in Inglewood versus Santa Monica? I do not, but I do know well, uh, that is this is something that is very important and something that okay, our but city I'm, I'm, needs. But I'm for sixty percent I'm of asking, Inglewood wait a minute, hold on a second, people I'm, voters. Hold on, I'm actually asking voted you, yes on Prop I'm 10, asking, so I feel like the majority I'm asking of you our I'm asking you a direct question. No, I, are you that, aware? I are you, you, I, I'm not aware, but I okay. think it's something that could benefit. Okay, it's seventy-five percent higher in Santa Monica. 
All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, of Inglewood. Um, really, I just wanted to address, um, first of all, a Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I want to congratulate um, the people of, of Inglewood. I want to congratulate Inglewood for making it past to, to see 2019, to bring the, the, the Rams here, to bring so much of revenue um, and, and excitement to Inglewood. We're gonna, we might go to the playoffs. Um, however, I want us to also, uh, if we can, uh, in light of the presidential uh, uh, influence that we have today uh, and the lack of seeing humanity to care enough to invest in humanity, I'm asking the people of Inglewood, if now that we know we can build new stadiums, if we can also now invest in the reality of real people and because they, they, they still need us because Donald Trump went all y'all gone. Remember, most of y'all from shithole countries and the other half are rapists. Don't forget that. Don't, don't forget that because it's real. But I see real people. So I'm asking us in 2019, let's move with that new year. That know that we're stable enough to do it. We economically fund it thank because you, we've done it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, And now sir. let's move to help people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I hope to see rent stabilization later on uh, this year. Thank you, uh, Council. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cynthia Guardado, and I'm a professor um, at Fullerton College and was born and raised here in Inglewood. Um, I just recently w moved back, and I'm paying $1,800 for where I live. And since I've been there, it's been rent increases to all the people who've been living there. Um, and I, I've only been there three months, and six units have been turned over while I've been there. So that's the reality that we're in. We're also... Um, I think that gentrification is a real thing, and if we don't do something to stabilize, then this community is no longer going to look like the community I grew up in. Um, it's not going to represent us, and there's going to be no space for me here, because I clearly can't afford a house in Inglewood, even on a professor's salary, <laughs> and I'm tenure track. So um, in a little bit, I'm not even going to be able to afford an apartment here. <laughs> Um, so I just really think that this is necessary. Um, you asked the girl a question about Santa Monica. First of all, Santa Monica is irrelevant to Inglewood because we're talking about Inglewood right now. But I just moved from Westlake, and there's a 3% rent control increase there. And I mean, that's like a phenomenal, like manageable number. Um, so I don't see why we can't do that here. If they can do that in Westlake, a mile from downtown LA. All right. Thank you. I live on South Osage Avenue. Um, I've been there for almost three years. I realize that we're here today in light of a very big rent increase of 100% or more that made headlines. And that's very dramatic. We hear that and we think, oh, those people have to leave. But I've already been seeing it in my building. First, the rent increases were 80 every year. But now, with the stadium coming in, they are um, $250 or more. And with the $250 rent increase, it is the same dramatic situation where the renters have to leave. They can't make it. And so I just wanted to say that, that it is the same situation. And um, will you respectfully please give the city rent stabilization so that the residents that live here at this time can continue to stay. I'm talking about the ones that have potential to be here. I'm a member of the gang. Also, uh, I graduated from Menza in Baltimore, Maryland. Call me Smiley all day. Most of the uh, that being said, I'm not even going to ask.
say uh, those who were already here and been here. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, we're at time. Uh, I'm just giving my soliloquy, sir. Sir, so I understand that, but we're at time. There's a lot of people want to talk. Just finish, get sir, to the period or something. Sir, sir, right, we're we're I, at time. You gotta hold me, man. You can back it up. Just but you know, I'll, sir, I'll catch you on the next one. Don't sir, we're at time. Uh, uh, sir, though, really. Thank you. Uh, I'm here speaking on behalf of two Latina mothers who weren't able to come up here today. They felt that nine stories up was way too far, afraid of heights. And I think bigger than that, they're more afraid of the fact that their rent is uncontrollably being increased. Uh, she lives in an apartment paying $1,600, a broken toilet for over six months. She's got rats in her apartment, and they just gave her another $200 rent increase. And she was very upset, and I'm sure... As you can see, there is an entire crowd of people outside. And so I'm here to uh, let you know that the people of Inglewood really want to see a rent uh, control in the city of Inglewood. And, and they have uh, brought to you over 10,000 signatures. And so I hope that you can see that there is thousands of people who need uh, support. And, 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 and it's something that they are going to win on themselves because it's always the people who move history forward. My name is Estefanie Castañeda. I'm the Centinela Valley Union High School District board member, trustee number five, representing both parts of Lenox and parts of um, Inglewood, which are part of my constituency, those high school students and families that are affected by um, these rent increases, uh, increases and a lack of rent control. And I'm here to say, I'm, as a Lenox resident, what I am seeing in the unincorporated area I am a part of is MRT at the very least taking action and giving the proper rent control policies that have long been over overdue for these unincorporated areas and at the very least given the vote that Inglewood had for Prop 10 and the overdevelopment that is going on in the area the residents deserve proper rent control and proper rent ordinances that will give at least residents here a certain kind of protection against the issue of gentrification displacement that the city of Inglewood is, is going through, which from what I understand, Mayor Butts, um, your definition of gentrification has um, at the very least not we're, represented we're at, we're at time, or been indicative of what it actually means to the residents at, of Inglewood. Ma'am, we're that at is time. All. Thank you. Okay, now everybody that's sitting there and applauding, if you applaud one more time, then we're gonna clear the chamber. This isn't a rally, it's a council meeting. So please don't do that again. Go ahead, sir. Mayor Buss, I just wanna know, do you, do you routinely destroy public records? And I'm asking you that question because I'm very concerned about the routine destroying of public records concerning police violence and misconduct. Um, want an answer to that question, sir? I would like you to answer. I've that never question. destroyed a public record. Go well, ahead. Police records have not been destroyed. I said I have never destroyed a public record. Have you advocated but for the destruction of no, public I have not. records? You have no, never advocated for the destruction of public records. I have never advocated for any records. such thing, no. Okay. But we routinely destroy records that are out of statute and, and have no use to the city. And how many years going back have you routinely destroyed records? Uh, I've been in public service for 46 years. Cities. Destroy I'm asking you. I've never destroyed a public record. Now go ahead. Because it's very suspicious that you would bring up the routine destruction of public records under Senate Bill SB 1421. I didn't bring it up. You didn't bring it up? No, sir. Okay. Would you like to clarify your stance? I don't Because a whole sir, lot of people want to know. Sir, continue with your comments. I'd also like to add and just make sure that you are aware that the San Bernardino County Sheriff Employees Benefit Association versus the County of San Bernardino, they were denied their request to get a stay to deny retroactive implement implementation of SB 1421. I want to make sure you are aware of that. Are you aware of that? And we're at time, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Good afternoon. I guess uh, my I guess it's not as important as everybody else's um, issues, but I'm a resident of Sierra Inglewood. My name is Gerardo Jauregui. Uh, we have a homeless situation encampment behind our home. And <coughs> these are my children. We lived in, I personally have lived in Inglewood for 25 years. Freeway of the 105 freeway on the Dominguez Hills Canal. We've already pulled them out four or five times. <coughs> on coming back, we have nobody to speak to. We call the city of Inglewood. All they do is come into our property and uh, kind of confront them, the people behind there. And unfortunately, I'm trying to see here that all these people here are, may become homeless and they may cause some of this issues, and I hope not. But that may be a problem that, <coughs> that we may cause. But anyway, we need help. Uh, a phone number that we can call whenever we're having issues behind the home. Call Inglewood. It's the PD does not know what to who to who to uh, what to do. The who else? We called uh, uh, Caltrans. Caltrans. We call Caltrans. Yeah, Caltrans. They That's come out. Hawthorne. And it's over and over. Exactly. Uh, that we have to call, but there's nobody that, that we can call directly to come out accountable. A a actually, the property belongs to Caltrans. It's in the county of Los Angeles, some parts of it in Hawthorne. None of it's in Inglewood. Thank you, th thank you, sir. The, so, so you can call Caltrans, it's their property. Some of it's in the county, some of it's in Hawthorne. None of it's in Inglewood. <laughs> so, sir, sir, if you, we, we're, we're here at time, but if you want to wait around, we'll have a, a, police to, a member of the police department explain that to you. In fact, Senator, why don't you take him out in the hallway? Okay, great. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of the City Council, and the public. Uh, I'm the Reverend Francisco Garcia, the rector at Holy Faith Episcopal Church here in Inglewood, California, and we are an anchor organization as part of the Uplift Inglewood Coalition. And so we uh, greatly appreciate the interest that you've expressed, Mayor, um, over these concerns of rising rents and we hope that it's the beginning of a real dialogue with the community about what is so urgently needed. We believe that 28% is still too high. Uh, we proposed a comprehensive tenant protection solution through a rent uh, ordinance, and there were thousands of signatures gathered through that effort. So we would ask that you work with your community, with members of the Uplift Inglewood Coalition, with renters who have expressed their concern of displacement to pass the most comprehensive tenant protections policy possible in the city so that the city, uh, rep uh, those who live here can also thrive along with the economic development of the city. And so we thank you and we urge you to do this. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, I'm Lily. My family's been in South Central for six generations. I'm Hevelyn and so has I, my parents. We're students. We go to Santa Monica College, and we've been trying to look for places to survive. I survive just by paying rent. We have no money to pay for food. And our like some of my friends from Fairfax have actually not had a place to live after graduating high school because it's like we're 18 now. It's like where do we go? We can't go live with our grandma or whoever. And it's like some of our friends are are homeless now because they don't have a place to live. So we just urge rent control in the city. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. You live in Inglewood? Yeah. Okay, where about? Which street? I live on 93rd. 93rd? And uh, what's and the cross street? Inglewood? Right at the border of Inglewood. The okay. border border. And you, ma'am? I'm in West Adams. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, ladies. Hi, my name is Ariana, and both my grandparents, my great-grandparents, have been living here since the 1960s, and I'm scared of, within the next few years, when I decide to move out, that I won't have somewhere to stay. I won't be able to rent an apartment. I won't be able to rent out of someone's home because there is no rent control in Inglewood. I love my city. I've been here for years. I shop at our local markets, and I support our black businesses and our brown businesses, and I just want rent control for our city so I can thrive here and my family also can thrive here in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Butts, City Council. My name is Jelani Hendricks. I'm an organizer with Uplift Inglewood. Just want to say I appreciate y'all leadership in confronting a $150 rent increase 
but this uh, issue 150 percent yeah sorry 50 percent increase but mm-hmm. this issue is widespread um as you've heard today a lot of people are experiencing this not just in particular rental uh properties um and waiting for viral tweets is no way to, to make policy and we can't ask our mayor to negotiate every single high increase across the city we need a comprehensive policy uh, we need rent control policy that allows a fair return for landlords but protects against unjust, unjust rent increases and unfair evictions. Um, Mayor Butch, you mentioned Santa Monica and how the rent is 70% higher. Excuse uh, me. Well, hold on. I'll give you time. Okay. Hold on one second. I mentioned Santa Monica because young lady mentioned that Santa Monica had rent control. The point I was making is that rent control is no guarantee that you will one day not be priced out of the rental market and have to make other accommodations. The average unit in Santa Monica, equivalent to Inglewood, costs 75 percent more. And they've had rent control since 1988. So that was the only point I was making. I wasn't referencing Santa Monica. She referenced it. So that was why I was making the point. But now you have 13 seconds. Go ahead. I totally understand. But the income in Santa Monica is a lot higher than the, than the uh, income in Inglewood. If you're talking about the average household and average resident, um, and if we continue on the path that we're going, we'll probably be as high as Santa Monica. So uh, let's be champions for the city, and um, let's do something about that. Thank you for your time. And on that, we agree. What was your name again, sir? My name is Jelani Hendricks, Uplift Inglewood Coalition. Jelani, thank you very much. Uh, no, no worries. and City Council. Um, My name is April Hooper and I'm a homeowner and I have lived in Inglewood for almost eight years. I'm here in support of rent stabilization and with um, Uplift Inglewood. You may have seen me lurking around at City Council meetings, block captain meetings and other events, but this is the first time I'm speaking publicly to you. I wanted to wait until there was an issue that I felt strongly about before speaking publicly And I also wanted to learn what the local issues are in Inglewood before making any opinions about them. And I'm speaking to you today because rent stabilization is an issue that I'm passionate about. Um, I'm really glad that our home value has almost doubled in the last eight years, but I think that it's more important that we protect the people who have lived here their whole lives than to worry about my home value. And um, I think it's more important to um, get it under control and you know I I love that we have the development in the city it's awesome but I think there's also too much of a good thing and so I ask you to please okay ma'am we're at time thank you moderation thank you ma'am good afternoon mayor um, and council members my name is Yelena Zeltzer and I'm a research analyst with Unite Here Local 11. I'm here on behalf with uh, the Uplift Inglewood Coalition. I'm here today on behalf of over 2,500 members of ours that are also residents of Inglewood and your constituents. Um, they live and work at Inglewood. Our, our members are confronted with the housing crisis on a daily basis. Inglewood clearly needs a comprehensive tenant protection policy and Inglewood residents have made this known. More than 10,000 Inglewood residents signed a petition in favor of local rent control, and Inglewood voters supported rent control protections through Prop 10 at a rate higher than anywhere else in LA County. We need real rent control that supports longtime Inglewood residents, um, not displacement in the city. We look forward to working with you on an ordinance in the near future. Thank you. Sean Lewis, and uh, I am a member of Uplift Inglewood Coalition. I'm a single parent that grew up in Inglewood. I work for a very well-known entertainment company in Culver City, and I'm here today to urge the city to implement a rent stabilization ordinance because the residents who voted for the $1,500 increase was not alone. Mayor Butts, I did reach out to you before the election. I emailed you, and I never heard back. I personally experienced a $1,000 rent increase here after a corporation called Global Integrity. While our building in 2016, they increased it between 50 to 76%. That was the rent increase that they were asking for. What was the address of the building? 
702 Venice Way, 702, 704, and 740. They gave me and my fellow neighbors the option of either renewing the lease for one month for $1,000 or renewing for 12 months with still the astronomical increase of 800 plus a, one, a $50 per pet, pet rent. I was able, unable to afford either, and with the help of Uplift Inglewood today, I am still fighting to remain in my home. As a matter so of fact- So you're still there? I, I have a court date fighting eviction on Monday the 14th. There are approximately 50 units in my building and we were all given the notice. Most of my neighbors that left, uh, most of them left, but the ones that remain, the few that remain, happen to be a two income home. I urge you to please implement rent stabilization as soon as possible and to help me address global integrity with di directly for this unfair practice. Um, they're pushing community members out and I know you personally, when you ran, one of your quotes on one of the publications that you mm -hmm. put out is that I would not let our Inglewood residents get pushed out. And what I said specifically was that I was not going to let out companies from outside of Inglewood come in and clear out and clear out apartments. And that's why I let you go over because um, I want you to leave your phone number with my and the city manager's executive assistant, Melanie McDade. She's standing right behind you. All right. Afternoon. Um, I sort of want to reiterate something Jelani had said earlier. Uh, although I'm really proud that our mayor is addressing this issue of rent control in, in specific cases, I think the problem itself is much larger than our mayor alone can handle. Because we're talking about an issue that's citywide. Um, my name uh, is Mama True. I work for LA CAN in Los Angeles. I get the people in my office that have been evicted from their apartments because of rent control, because of lack of rent control. And I can guarantee you that the people in Santa Monica that or have 75% uh, percent more are not the people who originally came in under rent control. So I would urge you to put together a, pan, uh, a uh, oversight committee that can address this problem citywide. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. I'm Reverend Dr. Harold E. Kidd. I'm pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Inglewood. I've lived in Inglewood for 17 years. Uh, I'm so close to the church that I can walk to the church. Uh, we just came out uh, for the Christian, Judeo-Christian community, came out of the Christmas season and the nativity scene speaks of because there was no room for the Christ in the end, that Jesus was born in a stable. Well, if you do the exegesis on that, it probably wasn't a stable. He was probably born in a cave. And I use that to say that we are seeing, I am seeing more and more persons affected by displacement because we don't have uh, a rent stabilization ordinance in place. I want to commend you for your economic renaissance of the city but we really do need to come forward with a firm ordinance that protects the least of these. An 80-year-old couple who lived two, uh, two units down from the church, they're in their mid-80s, they received a 90-day notice to vacate uh, for the, the Christmas holidays, and they had to vacate uh, the apartment dwelling that they had lived in for almost 20 years by January 30th. She lost a member because she has lupus and uh, her Kidd, property was we're sold. I'm giving you, had to Reverend Kidd, I've already given you an extra 30 seconds, so I'll give had you one to, more statement. She had to leave, relocate to Los Angeles, so for all intents and purposes, we probably lost her as a member because she doesn't drive. Thank right. you. Thank you.
Chase Barrett College. Have you guys back. Uh, one of the things that people need to realize, which I've mentioned before, is this is not just an Inglewood problem, and it's not because of the stadium. This rent increase is a California problem. It's happening all over the state. I know that people think that this impact is just because we have a stadium coming into the area. It's furthest from the truth. Research, and, and I've talked to Derek before, if you do some research and check areas like Watts or Jordan Downs, you will notice that they have drastic rent increases where people cannot afford to live in their apartments anymore. Uh, Ma'am, ma if you interrupt, you'll have to leave the room. So, okay, Sergeant at Yarms, could you please escort her from the... Anyway, it's not a lie. Rent control affects the people that actually live in the places already. There's a 3% increase, but if a person comes in new, they can raise that rent to whatever they want to. And that's not a lie, that's a fact, because I come from that industry. So... Okay, everyone that, everyone that speaks out, you're going to have to go because no one interrupted you. So, so let's, 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 <coughs> I'm going to, Mr. Holly, I'm going to give you 15 more seconds because you're interrupted. But when you interrupt, you're going to have to go. This isn't a free-for-all. So let him say what he has to say. You were allowed to say what you wanted to say. Okay, ma'am, you're going to have to go. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Holly. Anyway, that. That's pretty much it. It's just this, it's a California issue. It's a problem that needs to be, resol be resolved within the state, not just Inglewood. Happy New Year. Happy um, New Year. Brandon Myers. I promise I wasn't gonna say anything, but it's, 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 it's the Ooh. energy that, 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 that's not um, conducive Sir, city. sir, sir, you're going to sit down or you're going to go outside. Okay, thank you. I think the, um, sorry, I, th I think the energy um, right now and the eyes that are looking on our city, for instance, this camera guy. I've come to city council meetings. And I don't see the news. We're talking about good things, positive things going on in our city. Um, as you know, I just ran for mayor, and that was one of my main stances, uh, rent stabiliz uh, stabilization. And believe me, I'm, I'm a renter, so I, I, I know it myself. But I think coming um, to this meeting with the wrong energy and not uh, coming with a more collective supporting idea that we can bring our city forward, we're going to continuously have are going to come in, and they're going to keep putting their two cents in. There should be no way I'm sitting at home six and seven o'clock and I'm watching people who don't look like us talk about us. We shouldn't allow that to happen. Mr. Myers, you're at time, sir. Can I get 10 more seconds, please? <laughs> no, sir, you can't. All right, God bless you. All right. My name is Willie A.G. and I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood for 53 years and a regular head to city council for 18 years. I don't see anybody here from homo, I mean apartment owners that's raising the rent. At one time I owned quite a bit of property in the city. Other 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 areas. I got rid of all of it. And the reason was because I spent more money on apartments because they were destroyed not, and I, than I could. That's one reason why they're raising the rent, because of destruction in the apartments. I, I hate to see, I sympathize with the people, but you know, if you can't afford to pay these people because they own the property. And you know, if you own the property, you wouldn't want nobody, no tenant telling you how you should, what you should charge. Thank you, Mr. Ashley. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Hello, um, my name is Melissa. I'm oh, I understand completely. 
it is honestly frustrating as someone of my People of an older generation not seem to understand that we know what the problem is. We're not saying that we don't know what it is. We know that the stadium itself is not the reason why gun control is not happening. However, to displace people purposely knowing good and well that <coughs> these people don't have nowhere to go. They don't have the means to do the things that they need to do, yet you are going to sit there and say that, oh, it's different on this side of town. Well, I live in Inglewood, and that is what I'm more concerned about. I, like I said, I'm 22. There's no reason why I should have to live in someone's back house for the rest of my life. I'm trying to get out of that. So my question is, we know what the problem is. What is the solution? That's it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Emily Dixon. I've lived in Inglewood for 18 years. I'm here on a very um, lighter issue of uh, recreation for senior citizens. There are tennis courts uh, throughout the city. A Darby resurfaced the tennis courts there, and we are asking that a pickleball court be reserved on one of those tennis courts. Um, over in Vincent Park, they have denied us because for a, a number of excuses although they have stayed empty most of the time. Uh, we are flexible, but we would like one court designated for pickleball. Thank you. Ma'am, can you tell me what pickleball is? <laughs> Ma'am? Ma'am, can you tell me what pickleball is? Oh, pickleball is a, 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 a modified form of tennis where it's played on one court. You can have four, well, actually two games on one court, and we have a, a major pickleball um, constituency constituency within Inglewood. We have to go to El Segundo, Torrance, which are also fighting for pickleball, but we would like to see it in Inglewood. And we oh. do have someone who is uh, hired by the Recreation Center who is the instructor. Ma'am, uh, Council Padilla informs me that uh, pickleball will find its way to North Park. Uh, which is just a little ways from Sentinel Park. Yes, it is, or Darby Park, which we have been meeting oh, over there. Uh, so uh, Mr. Mayor. Please consider All Darby. Right. And Councilman Dawson, I guess, is a pickleball uh, anecdote. <laughs> I was. Uh, that that no, is my I, district I know that councilman, so I hope so. We have addressed it in uh, Darby Park, and I'll talk to uh, Ms. Barnes right. to see, but the court is already any more, paying for it. Any more public comment? Hi, my name is Siri Correjed. Um, no disrespect to what that gentleman said, but I don't believe that this rent increase has anything to do with how people live. It's very clear who can, who can afford this rent, and it's very clear what the intention of this rent increase is. So for allowing a rent increase, you are literally allowing gentrification to come in and displace an already disenfranchised people. We just voted in November to give a bond to help ho the homeless population. This is the second one in the last four years. How do these bonds help when increasing, when increasing the rent like this is the reason for the displacement of the people? It is important to protect people of color in a system that is already designed to continue to oppress us and keep us oppressed. It is 2019 and putting profits over people is a thing of the past. We need more laws protecting people and making sure that no more people end up on the streets. Thank you. Hey, ma'am. What's your name, ma'am? Siri Correjed. And where do you live, ma'am? I don't even live here. I live in Glendale. You live where? In Glendale. In Glendale. All right. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll close public comment. And I definitely have a few comments, but I'll... Um, go down the row first, Councilman Dotson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Did you have a public comment, sir? Can you, sir, can you come forward? My name is uh, Steve Kern. I'm a property owner here since uh, 2002 at 4055 West Century Boulevard, which is in uh, uh, Councilman Dotson's district. And I just wanted to, uh, for the record, and place in the record for the council 
uh, a uh, email that I sent to uh, Ms. Smith, who uh, I believe is an assistant to Councilman Dotson, and it just deals with, uh, on behalf of my tenants, with regard to uh, repairs that have been done along Century Boulevard now since July of last year, continuing for about another <coughs> year, and uh, just wanted to see if there would be consideration for the tenants for a um, business interruption subsidy. I know that the um, along the Crenshaw improvement that they have made these subsidies for the tenants. So I just wanted to put that in for the record. Where may I leave this? Clerk, give me a minute. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll close public comment. Council comments, Councilman Dotson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to wish everybody a, a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Um, I want to invite all of you who need to shred paperwork to my shredding event on Feb February the 9th at the Police Icop Center on 7th Avenue in Manchester. You can come out, have some coffee and donut, and uh, get your uh, your paper shredded in a uh, you know, in a uh, environment that you don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to be put out onto the street. I also, as one of the senior members of the King Day uh, parade and program, I would like to invite you all out on January the 19th to this new Martin Luther King festival and program. So mark your calendars for January 19th and come out 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you very much. You guys have a wonderful <coughs> rest of your day. Councilman uh, Padilla, District 2. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, first off, again, you know, Happy New Year. And uh, I just want to say that <coughs> You know, I appreciate everybody coming out. I truly uh, appreciate folks willing to stand and, uh, you know, talk about their concerns. And and uh, we hear you. Uh, uh, again, as, as one of the uh, presenters stated, uh, this isn't a unique Inglewood issue. It's an issue that is in the state of California. Uh, certainly, uh, the city of Inglewood is doing our part to address housing. You know, and we will continue to do our part. Uh, but again, just uh, want to thank folks for coming out, and uh, I trust that you will enjoy the rest of your week. Councilman Franklin, District 4. Well, let me just say uh, Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for your public comments. Uh, we clearly understand that rent issues, as well as investment issues in the city, um, has escalated dramatically with the recent interest in causing the city of Inglewood to be a designated city and your comments that you raised today did not go in vain and we just thank you for your comments and have a blessed day. Thank you, Councilman Morales. Thank you. Comment a little bit. Thank you everybody for coming out. Um, I think obviously that uh, rent increases are a subject that is extremely important both in our city and across the state. Uh, this last holiday a uh, couple weeks, we got to see um, it happen here on social media, and, and I want to address that. Uh, in terms of rent going up, we are not lost on the fact that the amenities that are coming in, much like if you go to a hotel with amenities, uh, your rate increases. Simple things like uh, having more amenities in the city likewise affect the rent overall. Uh, that doesn't mean that we don't understand the effect. As a matter of fact, you know, we start, uh, we, we've always thought about, you know, the impact that it has. I think this weekend was a good example of what leadership is looking at. I think the mayor actually uh, showed that he's paying attention, as we all are, on things that are unreasonable and that he is willing to uh, do what he needs to do to make sure that the residents are treated fairly. Now, um, that being said, you know, that's a good example of an isolated incident, whether or not it's a situation uh, that dictates a long-term solution, 
We don't know. Uh, these are things that we're constantly talking about, constantly thinking about. Um, but it goes a long way to show, uh, you know, the last year or so, this, when this subject came up, uh, we, we were constantly challenged, the mayor uh, more so because of his election in terms of the attention he was placing on it. Um, I want everybody to see this as an example of the attention we actually are placing on it. Uh, that being said, we also understand the market and how rents are dictated. Um, and those are things that, that we are constantly looking at. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I know that this conversation will continue. Um, but that being said, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for coming out. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, the, the issue of um, affordability in Inglewood has always been at the forefront of the policymakers here. Bless you. The city of Inglewood, per capita in whole numbers, and I've said this before, has more affordable housing units than anywhere in the South Bay. Our average rents to this day are lower than anywhere in the South Bay. And for the average of the state of California. Well, that means nothing to people that get a notice of a rent increase that they can't afford. This is not a simplistic issue. The majority of people that provide rental housing in the city of Inglewood are mom and pop residents. That's the majority. And for decades, they have rented equivalent property for less than anywhere in the South Bay, less than Santa Monica, less than the market overall would provide. And so to just unilaterally tell people that have just hung on until Inglewood became the equivalent of areas surrounding us, that's not something you should enter into lightly. Now, one thing that I've always said, I always said that I would personally, I would seek to never allow an investment company outside our city to come in and raise rents in a wholesale fashion that wouldn't result in de facto eviction of everyone in an apartment building. It's wrong, it's unfair. We had a situation like that that I became aware of uh, from my own Inglewood, actually. And I have been monitoring social media for well over 18 months. And every time someone had a story where they said their rent was raised unilaterally for over 50%, I would send a message. I'd say, please message me or contact me at my city email address. I said, I want to see the rental agreement because I want to talk to your landlord. In a year and a half, there's only one person ever took me up on that. And when I contacted her, I found out that, and this is not this last weekend, that she is taking over an apartment that had been rented to her father over 25 years ago, and that the rent was less than 50% of market rents. And they wanted to institute a 25% rent increase. How are you going to argue with a landlord that has suppressed rent for that long. Well, so what I'm saying to say is this, this is not a monolithic unilateral problem. Now, last the day after Christmas, I saw a posting, and it covered two buildings. One was on East 99th, which would have had a 150% increase. The other was on West Regent, and that would have had a 100% increase, a little over 100% increase. And it was going to be effective in 60 days. And so what that meant to people was that in 60 days they were going to have to leave and they would have no time to save any money. That's wrong. And the investment company that had bought these buildings, you know what, you know what their rationale was? Because I had them come in here and talk to me. Because they feared that we would do what the county did and unilaterally implement a 3% cap. 
Now here's the problem. When people come and buy property at today's values, they can't pay the mortgage or the property taxes and make a profit at what someone who's owned the property 40 years could do. So then what this means is that if no one ever comes and invests in the city and the property is never renewed, then the city becomes dilapidated. So what are we going to do? Well, here's, here's what we did this weekend. We agreed that there'd be a six-month moratorium until July 1st on any rent increases for these buildings. That there'd be a 28% increase to 1475 a month from 1150 And that's still way under the market rate of 1800 And there'd be no further increase until March of 2020. And then the rent would go to 1795 which is under the market rate that we have today. We further agreed that any tenants that move within the first 12 months would receive a total refund of their security deposit guaranteed. We further agreed that any tenant that could not forecast them being able to afford market rent today by March of 2020, if they moved by March 30th, that they receive a $10,000 relocation allowance. $10,000. If they decided to leave any day after March 30th, their last month's rent would be refunded in full. If they decided to move to any building owned by this company, anywhere, and they offered up 20 units that are in the Hyde Park area about 20 blocks away, that they would let them move with no move-in costs, give them the last month's rent, rent free where they were and the first month's rent free in their relocation. This is not control of rents, but this is options. This is tenant equity and tenant fairness. Because okay. this, this is not clarify that that's specific only to the addresses that you Oh no no the, uh, this this example is specific only to these addresses okay. but what I'm telling you is that this is an example an example of a way that tenants can have options without monolithically lumping everyone that owns a building into one pot and saying that everyone should be affected the same way so what I'm saying is that the council's paying attention. We're not going to let people be put in the streets. But we're going to be thoughtful. And we're not going to be pushed into someone else's solution. Because as I said, I was police chief in Santa Monica for 15 years. And they've had rent control since 1988. The average property in Santa Monica of the same configuration, about 75% more to rent than Englewood. What does that tell you? It tells you that rent control is not an ultimate solution. The ultimate solution actually is to give people the tools, access to jobs, to exercise self-determination. And that's what we've done in this town. They're gonna be, be in the ne over the next seven years, counting from where we started, 60 to 60,000 construction jobs paying prevailing wages, 60,000. We have former felons that are working with the iron workers right now that are making between 60 and $90 an hour. So this is not a monolithic solution. We're not gonna be pushed into someone's idea of what the solution is. We're gonna do what's best overall for everyone in the city. But in the meantime, we're not gonna let people be treated unfairly. With that, uh, I'm going to close the meeting in the name of Henry Wise. I think we have a resident on Fifth Avenue that passed recently, but we'll, we'll adjourn her name at the next meeting. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.